It never ceases to amaze me just how much the Western world is set up and catered to the male's hormonal cycle, which is based on the circadian rhythm. I'm sure you heard this before. This is when the sun rises and the sun sets every single day. It goes on like a 24 hour clock. While this is great for productivity, it can and has left a lot of women feeling drained at the end of the day, at the end of the week, because we're not honoring our body's natural hormonal cycle. For menstruating women, we have two cycles. We have the circadian rhythm, and we also have the infradian rhythm. And the infradian rhythm, as you can guess, is based on our menstrual cycle. This breaks up the traditional 24-hour clock into more of a 28-day cycle, according to the moon traditionally. I'm sure you felt throughout the month, week to week, you feel like a completely different person. I'm talking your mood is different, your energy is different, Different. your cravings are different what your body requires is different this is not all in your head this is completely normal and it's based on your hormonal cycle for the past seven years or so since I started learning about this cycle and how to what's called cycle sync it has made a complete difference in my life now for the past seven years I did work in a corporate office and now I work for myself at home so my lifestyle has changed just a little bit but in today's video we're gonna be going over that menstrual cycle that hormone hormonal cycle and I'll be sharing how to live more aligned with that natural flow, your inner rhythm, so you can create more balance in your energy, in your emotions, and your overall well-being. If this is your first time seeing my face, my name is Lakeisha and on this channel I post wellness, holistic beauty, and lifestyle related content. If that is something that you are interested in, then make sure you are subscribed and without further ado, let's get started. Part 1 the four phases of the menstrual cycle. The menstrual cycle is broken up into four different phases that vary in length. The menstrual phase, the follicular phase, the ovulatory phase, and the luteal phase. And stay tuned to the end because I'll also be sharing some book recommendations so you can further your reading. So the first is your menstrual phase. Now this is the first day of your cycle. This usually lasts on average between three to five days. It can vary from person to person. During this time, your energy, your hormones plummet, and that is why you're feeling incredibly weak and tired. You want to think of your menstrual phase and your menstrual flow specifically as a report card for how you've done over the past month. Based on how you've cared for your body and your mental health, that will determine what type of menstrual flow you experience. I always thought that as a woman, like for some reason we're just cursed with pain. We come into pain as we have our menstrual cycles, we bring life into this world through pain and when that cycle ends we end in pain as well in menopause but this really does not have to be the case and throughout this journey it's really shown me just how much I can control my body and you can as well so during this phase you also want to do activities such as light movement uh, this could be stretching and yoga going for a walk to get that circulation that blood flow moving in your body meditation and journaling are also great things to do during this time for your nutrition you want to eat warm food Foods. This is like soups and stews, nourishing foods that help to give your body all of the nutrients that it needs during this time. For self-care, you want to focus on rest, cozying up with blankets, and taking it easy. Now, like I said, I worked in a corporate world before. I know that you cannot just take two days off because your tummy hurts, but it can be very beneficial to make sure that you ease back a little bit during this time. What I used to do when I worked in an office was I would work from home during those days. So at the very least, I could be in my bed, I could be cuddled up with a warm blanket, a warm compress, and I was able to work from my home. Now I know that this was definitely a luxury that I had and for a lot of people you may not have the opportunity to be so flexible with your work environment but it's all about figuring out what works for you. Thinking about what you can control, maybe have a conversation with your manager to see what you can do during this time. Whatever language that's comfortable for you to make sure that you are getting what you need during this time. Next is your follicular phase, and this is day 6 to 14 of your cycle. Once again, these dates may vary, it depends on you. But this is when your energy starts to rise. Your hormone levels are starting to rise once again, so you'll feel a burst of energy. You'll feel like you can take on the world at this time. This time is all about growth and productivity. It's a perfect time to start new, 
projects, to make new plans, to start creating new habits, putting forth new goals, anything when it comes to starting something new. It's a time to be creative and to try your hand at building a new skill, try your hand on taking on a new challenge, whatever that looks like for you. For activities, this will look like brainstorming, planning, starting new projects like I spoke about, as well as doing moderate exercise. This is my favorite time to do cardio, for example, because of that extra burst of energy that I have during this phase. For nutrition, you want to focus on fresh, light foods. This is the time when you can have a lot of raw foods like raw carrots, uh, if you want to have celery, all of those raw foods that are not necessarily cooked down because your metabolism, your metabolism is a little bit slower during this time. This is a great time to fast as well because you don't require as much nutrients, you don't require as much heavy foods during this time. So think fresh, light vegetables, salads, smoothies, seeds that support hormonal balance. For self-care, this is a time when you can try something new. If you are really interested in trying, let's say, lymphatic drainage and you really want to try a new self-care ritual, then definitely do it during this time. You want to set your intentions for the month ahead as well. The third phase is your ovulatory phase, and this is day 15 to 17. So this is the phase when you are at peak energy. All of your estrogen is at its peak. Also see a rise in your communication skills. You'll be more outgoing during this time and you'll feel the need to socialize more. So in terms of activities, this is a great time to network. If you have any projects or presentations that need to be done, this is a great time to do that as well. If you need to do any socializing or any intense exercise. So this think hit exercise, think strength training, think all of those more extraneous types of workouts. This is the perfect time to do it because you have the energy to support it. For nutrition, you want to focus on fiber rich foods, lean proteins, drink lots of water to support your level detoxification as well. Just supporting and maintaining equilibrium and balance within your body. It's also great to have any of those cheat foods that you really like because your body is processing them a lot better. So coffee, if you want to drink, if you want to have chocolate during this time, if you want to, you know, have a little sweets here and there, this is a perfect time to do it. Um, for self-care, it'd be a great time to go out with friends, great for trying date nights, especially activity dates because you have that energy. Practice your affirmations during this time and become really aware of your mental processes and your thoughts. Just be kind to your body and embrace your inner power. And the last phase is your luteal phase. This will be around day 18 to 28 of your cycle. So during this phase, your energy will start to slow down a little bit and it'll be gradual though. It's not like a steep dip, a steep decline. You will feel this motivation to check everything off of your to-do list. This is when your brain is like, I need to get things done make a list and get all the tasks that you need to do, any cleaning that needs to be done, anything around the house, any baking that you needed to do, any projects that needed to be finished, make sure that during this time you set out your schedule so it's organized to complete all of these goals. You are goal focused and orient goal oriented during this time as well. So for activities, like I said, this could be completing tasks. For uh, exercise, this could be light exercise. You can also do a bit of like resistance and body weight exercise during this time. I love doing Pilates during this time as well because I have that energy and that strength to do it. Your metabolism will also be very high during this time so you'll want to eat a lot of food. So for nutrition this would be like root vegetables, hearty food, foods that are rich in magnesium as well that will help you combat PMS symptoms. Okay. Um, you also want to have a lot of warm and warming foods like ginger. You also want to eat a lot of warming foods like ginger, for example, to improve that circulation in your body. And that will help to combat any inflammation during this time. In the luteal phase, you want to stay away from sugar, alcohol, uh, dairy as much as possible, just because it leads to inflammation and it can worsen PMS symptoms. Sugar is like one of the worst things that you can do for your body when you're PMSing. Um, um, because it intensifies it. Based on how you treat your body during this phase is how your cramps are going to behave in the menstrual phase. For self-care, you also want to focus on grounding rituals, warm baths during this time to support your muscles and your body, journaling your how you're feeling because this is a time when you can truly feel overwhelmed, especially because if you have a long to-do list of things that you need to do, it's kind of hard to compartmentalize all of that. That was a hard word, compartmentalize all of that. So it's great to write it down and reflect on your progress understanding that if there's anything that you did not complete during this phase it will start again next month 
like clockwork. Although I have been religiously practicing this for about three years now, I still do not have this memorized. So I do have charts that I have created and I will have free versions of this chart as well on my blog that you can download as printables. I have these charts set up in my kitchen as well. My husband is a primary chef in our relationship. So it's important that he knows what phase I'm in. So as we're uh, choosing what we need to do for the week, I have my phase written on this calendar. So he's aware that really is very helpful for him too. If you have a partner or children, it helps them know how they can support you too. Part two, creating a routine to keep yourself on track. I want to share with you guys some of the apps that I really love using to help keep me on track. Number one would be Notion. This is a huge planner for my life in general, as well as for my content and for all of the projects that I want to do. It's great because it has this little reminders that help you and keep you on track. I've been reading this book. It's called Sacred Woman. I'm sure you've heard of it before. The author is a Queen of Fua, and she talks about like healing your body, healing the feminine, healing your womb, and cleansing it from all of the generational trauma that still lives in your womb because that's what connects you to your ancestors from the time you're born you're already born with every egg that you will ever have so all of that trauma is already imprinted in your body so it's all about cleaning that releasing all of that so that your womb can become a safe environment not a hostile environment for your next offspring and she really emphasizes this concept of creating sacred times throughout your day so i talked about like the morning routine this is a sacred morning like so there's no distractions i use like a iphone focus mode on my phone and i put on that no apps can message me during this time no notifications no one can call me during this time there's specific hours in the day when people can call me but otherwise it's blocked off my sacred rising sacred study sacred productivity sacred reflection sacred closing and sacred rest in between there i think there's like one or two hours that my phone is actually on um otherwise it's on these focus modes and that helps me be very present. I used to be incredibly proud of the fact that I was such a huge multitasker, but I really felt to a point where it was splitting my head in like a million different sections. It was giving me headaches because there was so many things that I was constantly focusing on and I was constantly being distracted by notifications and messages and this and that. And so all of that is gone at this point and I can finally breathe and get the things that I want to do done. As best as you can, try to organize times for yourself as well. Another app that I would suggest using is a period tracking app. So I used to use Flow, which I really did enjoy, but after all of the uh, information breaches, the data breaches from like 2021 or something like that, I got a little scared, a little spooked from using that app. They didn't really do much to address it and that did not rub me the right way. Um, but thankfully I found a new app, it's called Lively and I've really been loving this app. I think it's just so girly and cute and like aesthetic first of all. And there's tons of information in here. You can go in there, you can track your, uh, your emotions, your mood, you can track your fun activities <laughs> any symptoms that you're feeling any type of exercising you can also use this as a journal as well so if you're not someone who likes to journal like in a book or anything you can quickly do it here i don't really use the journal section too much because i love my physical journal but that's great too if you are someone who likes a digital journal it also charts your cycle on a calendar so that makes it really easy i use this calendar at the beginning of my follicular phase and i go through all of the calendars in my house and put all the phases in so my husband and can stay up to date if you guys are not a huge fan of calendars like we are there's also a partner syncing function which sends him like a i think it's a widget on his phone and so you can implement where your mood is where your fun energy is so he knows where you are and how to support you and i think that's really cool one of my absolute favorite features about this app is the section that's called do move and eat and if you click on it it tells you what phase of your cycle is in and gives you suggestions 
suggestions on things that you should do. Not only suggestions, but if you click on them, it tells you why. It tells you what it does for you. So this is a really great app to learn how to support your body and learn how to do um, self-care rituals, different nutrition things. Um, if there's more things than just that chart, or if you want to make your own chart, you can do so using this app. And then of course it has a widget on your phone so you can easily track which day of your cycle that you're in just at a glance. Another one of my favorite apps is Allo Moves. This is a workout app workout meditation type app. They also have clothing if that's something that you're interested in too, a little, little shop that you can purchase from. But essentially, I love this because it's a subscription service. I think it's about $200 a year. I have a room in my home. My husband and I have like a little gym set up so that we can do our exercises here. I really love working out in the comfort of my own home. So this is really helpful for me, but I like going on here. They split up workouts into your level. So if you're a beginner, there's moderate intensity and then there's advanced intensities just to make sure that you're supporting your body. There's different classes on here. There's different series that you can follow. One of my favorite series that I'm currently following it's called synced and so it gives you a routine during the four phases of your cycle which i find is really cool i love using this in the morning to meditate i love using this throughout the day when i do my meditations as well and it's it's really really transformed my physical fitness when i'm in my follicular phase and i do my planning i will go ahead and take the link for every video and i will put it in my calendar so my calendar pops up during the correct time the link put it in my calendar and it pops up on my phone and reminds me that i need to do that or in the morning if I need to do a stretch I will do that same thing too and it helps keep me on track and the last app that I use is called pillow now I am a chronic insomniac I've been having sleeping problems since I was in university it is just what it is I'm also a night owl and I love that this app caters to you basically it helps you track how you sleep so it tracks you know when you're in your REM sleep when you're in the first second and third stages of your sleep to help optimize your sleep every morning it gives you a report card and tells you how you slept how that went and it gives you helpful tips and tricks to improve your sleep and I love that it caters to your specific cycle so as a night owl it tells me tips catering to my sleep Sleep as a night owl. I know for a, a, the longest time I felt like there was something wrong with me for being a night owl because you know you have to go to work at eight in the morning and I'm not someone who wakes up at six. I just cannot do that. I remember when my husband and I first moved into this home together we wanted to sync our lives to each other and I got on his schedule. I had the worst sleep that I could ever have had because he's such a morning person he wakes up at five in the morning the butt crack of dawn every single day when i was living according to his cycle i got to a place to a point where i could not even fall asleep i i think i was up for like three days because i just my body could not sleep so that's when i realized that being a night owl is not a bad thing i started reading this book i'll put it here on the screen and it talks about you know the science behind being the night owl and how historically being a night owl was a very positive mutation in the human species that chose a specific group of people between 10 and 30 percent of the population are night owls and this allowed us to continue living as human society because the night owls would stay up at night and guard the people that were sleeping so that no animals no predators no anything can come and hurt them and they can get a night rest minimize the amount of time that people are vulnerable so when the uh, morning people woke up at the butt crack of dawn they could go out and hunt and get food and gather and whatnot at all times the tribe was safe like that little anecdote but um it's been very very helpful for me to organize my cycle that way and another thing that i do is i use my apple watch so i have the app on my phone and i put that on before i sleep and so that monitors where i am in my sleep cycle sometimes when you wake up in the morning because your alarm is set at like an arbitrary hour like seven o'clock in the morning you can wake up in a part of your sleep cycle that you're not supposed to be woken up in and that's what leaves you feeling groggy because your body is still asleep but this actually tracks your sleep and wakes you up at the optimal time to make sure that you're not feeling groggy and you're at the perfect place when you're awake and you've got energy and that has truly made a difference another note on that i actually don't keep any of my devices except for my watch in my room and this is usually disconnected from the internet before i go to bed Part 3. Recommendations for your success. 
So I've talked a lot about cycle syncing and I've actually read about seven books on the feminine cycle in general. And then of course the other books that I've mentioned in passing that I've read up on the rest of Balancing My Life. My two favorite books for cycle syncing is number one, In the Flow. This is by Elisa Vitti. This one I found is the most comprehensive. It also has the charts like I've talked about. This is the chart that I've made, but she also has charts in there. So I went through this book and picked out the foods that I don't really eat or are not accessible to me and everything that I just it's not pertains to my life and I made my little charts that way and she also includes different activities that you can do with your family so I mentioned before if you have a partner or if you have children there's still different ways that you can organize your life that way she has charts for that too so you can incorporate your family teach them how to do it also encourage them to support you and their future spouse or if they're girls themselves their future uh, cycles as well so it's very very helpful that way another book that I really like is happy hormone this one teaches you all about nutrition that supports your hormone balance just figuring out how to balance all the hormones in my body that really help me feel good and secure for healing productivity lifestyle like i said before the book sacred woman by queen afua is incredibly helpful that one dives into a little bit more detail about like the african spirituality part of it as well so if you are from african descent this would be a really good book but i do think that everyone can benefit from these teachings too so if you're not of african descent that is totally fine too one other thing i will mention i would recommend picking up some sort of herbalism book i would recommend the art of herbal healing this is herbalism for beginners by ava green she gives you a comprehensive guide on the herbs understanding the language of herbs and she gives you you know how to use some of the most common herbs in your daily life and if you are ready to dive into herbalism i'd recommend picking up a book like this this is the Encyclopedia of Herbal Medicine. This is what I use to make a lot of my herbal blends. I hope that throughout this video, I was able to inspire you to take control of your feminine health and organize your life around your feminine cycle. It has truly changed my life and I hope that it changes yours as well. Let me know if you have any other questions, any book recommendations that you've read as well, leave them down below. Any other tips or things that you also do, we would love to hear them in the comments. Click over here to see some of my previous videos and as always, stay gorgeous. Just stay fabulous and I will see you lovely ladies and gents in my next one. Bye!